Hi, my name is Dave Quaman. I'm an assistant athletic trainer at the College of St. Sebastica. I have a Bachelor of Science in Athletic Training from Minnesota State and a Master of Science in Athletic Training Education from Old Dominion University. Today I'm going to talk to you a little about landing mechanics. I'm going to start by talking about what we want and what to look for on the frontal plane, or the front view. Then we'll move to the sagittal or side view. So from the front, we want our toes to be positioned straight forward, about shoulder width apart. We don't want a lot of external or internal rotation at our feet. We want them nice and straight. From there, our knees should be right above our toes and be in perfect alignment with our hips and with our shoulders. So there's one straight line from shoulders, hips, knees to toes. We don't want a lot of side bending in our trunk or rotation. We want to stay in that nice straight position. From the sagittal plane or side view, we want to land. So when we're coming down from a landing, we want to land in about 30 degrees of knee flexion. So this angle right here, we want that to be about 30 degrees. And then we want to move through at least 90 degrees. So if we start at 30, we want to get to 120, which is about right here. So we're landing 30, moving through 90, a lot of flexion in our knees, a lot of flexion in our hip, this angle, and flexion in our trunk. When uh, we are uh, talking about improper mechanics, what we're looking for from the frontal plane is what's known as knee valgus. And knee valgus is when our patella or kneecap moves inside of our big toe. So it goes inside, that's this angle right here. Knee valgus has been shown to put a lot of strain on the ACL and they've looked at the amount of knee valgus that you have, the more that you have or display, the higher chance you have for sustaining an ACL injury. So it's really important that when we land, we keep our knees right over our toes, don't let any of it go in. From sagittal plane, what we want to look for is a very, uh, a lot of flexion in our joints when we land. So we don't want to land extended. We want a lot of joint flexion at knees, hips, and trunk. And what that does, specifically at the knee, is it increases muscular co-contraction, so the activation of our quadriceps and our hamstrings working together. That helps to increase joint compression forces and allows our muscles to absorb the force of the landing. Now, if we're landing very extended, we don't have good co-contraction, our muscles can't absorb the forces, and it's gonna get transferred to our ligaments. And that's when we can get an injury, like an ACL injury or another ligament damage. The other strategy to look for is what's known as quad dominant landing strategy. Now what that looks like is somebody will land on their toes and their knees will be in front of their toes. So normally when we land, we want our knees to be back, but somebody quad dominant landing will land and their knees will come in front of their toes and they'll stay there. Now what that does is it increases the contraction of your quadriceps and decreases the activity of your glutes, which are very powerful, and your hamstrings. So you're taking your muscles out of the equation again, they can't absorb force. That force is going to get transferred on to your ligaments. And the last thing to keep an eye out for is what's known as tucking your hips or getting your hips tucked under, which is commonly taught to young gymnasts. What that looks like is basically they're taught to get their butt underneath their hips. So they want their butt under as opposed to being out. What that does, as you can see, if I'm trying to tuck my butt under, I'm going to be moving forward, so I'm going to display a quad dominant landing strategy, and I'm not having any flexion at my hips or my trunk. So again, decreasing flexion at joints doesn't allow for the muscles to kick in and absorb the force. If they're not able to absorb the force, then it's going to get transferred somewhere else, and it's usually down to the ligaments. So quick recap, make sure we're landing, nice straight line from toes, knees, hips, shoulders, no knee valgus. And when we do land, we want a lot of flexion at our joints. We don't want to land upright. We don't want to land quad, land quad dominant. We want a lot of flexion at our trunk and at our hips.